Okay, are you ready to uh, fall off the edge of the world? <laughs> Just kidding. Today we're diving into the world of flat earth theory. Oh. You know that idea that the earth is, well, not a globe, but a flat disk? Honestly, I thought this was something out of the history books, but you sent in some articles and it seems this theory is surprisingly alive and kicking. It is indeed. And while the scientific evidence against a flat earth is overwhelming, what's fascinating is how this idea persists. It really makes you think about how we form beliefs and what makes some ideas stick, even when they're, shall we say, not exactly supported by reality. Right. It's like we have satellites, astronauts, pictures from space. You'd think the case would be closed. I mean, even the ancient Greeks figured out the earth was round way back when. Oh, absolutely. We're talking the 6th century BC. Pythagoras and Aristotle were already making arguments for a spherical earth based on observations of the stars and how shadows change. Mm. But it's Eratosthenes who really takes the cake. This guy actually calculated the Earth's circumference in the third century BC, and he was surprisingly accurate using just shadows and some clever geometry. Wait, hold up. So while most people were probably just trying to figure out how to build a decent chariot, this guy was out there measuring the entire planet using shadows. That's amazing. It really is. It shows you that even in ancient times, people were capable of incredible scientific deductions. So the idea that the Earth is a sphere is definitely not new. Okay, so let's get into some of the arguments flat earthers use today. Yeah. One I hear a lot is, I look at the horizon, it looks flat, case closed. Um. It's like, come on. Well, that one always makes me chuckle. It's all about perspective. Imagine an ant walking on a basketball. From its tiny point of view, that basketball would seem like a vast flat plane. Ah. The Earth is just on a much larger scale. We don't notice the curve from ground level because we're just too small compared to the Earth's size. It's like trying to see the curve of a giant beach ball while you're standing right next to it, right? Exactly. Yeah. But we have tons of evidence that contradicts the flat horizon claim. Think about airplanes. They fly high enough to clearly see the Earth's curvature. And then there are those mesmerizing time-lapse videos of ships disappearing hull first over the horizon. Oh, right, right. Try explaining that on a flat Earth. If the Earth were flat, those ships would just get smaller and smaller until they were too tiny to see, not gradually disappear, hull first. What about that argument I hear about water not being able to curve? Something about water always finds its level. Therefore, oceans can't curve around a spherical Earth. Ah, uh, the classic water finds its level argument. It sounds convincing until you remember the big guy in the room, gravity. Yeah. Gravity pulls everything toward the center of the Earth, and water is no exception. That's why even a tiny droplet of water forms a sphere. It's trying to get as close as possible to the center of gravity. Uh -huh. The same applies to oceans on a much grander scale. So it's not that water can't curb, it's that gravity is sculpting it into a sphere along with everything else on Earth. Okay, what about this one? The horizon always seems to be at eye level no matter how high you climb. That sounds kind of flat earthy, doesn't it? It's another illusion of perspective. Because the Earth is so large, the horizon appears to rise with you as you go higher. If the Earth were truly flat, the horizon would stay at a fixed distance no matter your altitude. But we have pictures and videos from space that show the curvature very clearly, and you can see the horizon drop away as you ascend. Ah, uh, so it's like that feeling of the ground dropping away when you're on a Ferris wheel, mm -hmm. only on a planetary scale. Okay, here's one that always makes me laugh. And the Earth is spinning so fast, why don't we feel it? It's like they think we'd all be thrown off into space like rag dolls if the Earth were actually round. That's a fun one to explain. We don't feel the Earth spin because it's incredibly smooth and constant. Okay. Think about it. It, you don't feel the movement of a car when you're cruising at a steady speed on a smooth highway, right? Right. You only feel the acceleration or braking. The Earth's rotation is similar. It's a consistent, steady spin, so we don't feel any sudden changes in motion. It's like we're all just chilling on this giant spinning spaceship, and we're so used to the ride we don't even notice it anymore. Okay, last one for this round. This one's a doozy. A lot of flight Earthers claim that all those incredible pictures of Earth from space... You know, the ones that show a beautiful blue sphere are fake. Okay. Like, it's all a giant conspiracy, and NASA is in on it. Right, the grand space photo conspiracy. I think we need to take a moment to appreciate the sheer scale of this alleged conspiracy. We're talking about thousands of images and videos from multiple countries, space agencies, private companies, even amateur astronomers. Yeah. To think they're all in on it requires some truly Olympic-level imagination. Yeah, I think it would be easier to believe the Earth is round 
than to believe in a conspiracy that big. And let's not forget about the live streams from the International Space Station. Anyone can watch those. Oh, yeah. It's hard to fake a live video feed from space, what did you say? It would be quite the challenge, to say the least. So while the conspiracy theories can be entertaining, they don't really hold up to scrutiny when you consider the vast amount of evidence we have. Okay, so we've had some fun with the Flat Earth arguments, and trust me, there are more where those came from. But I think it's time to shift gears and look at what actually proves we live on a giant spinning ball. What kind of hard-hitting evidence do we have? Oh, lots. Mm, yeah. Let's dive into that. <laughs> Welcome back to our deep dive into Flat Earth theory. In part one, we had a blast debunking some of the more creative arguments for a flat Earth and touched upon the mountain of evidence that points to, you know, reality. Yeah, we definitely had some laughs, but now I'm curious. If the evidence for a round Earth is so clear, why do some people still hold on to this flat Earth idea? It's like we've got all the pieces of the puzzle, they fit perfectly together, and yet some folks are trying to jam in a square peg. It's a question that goes beyond just science. The reasons people believe in conspiracy theories like the flat Earth are complex and often deeply personal. So it's not just about lacking scientific knowledge. Right. For some, it's about a deep distrust of authority figures and institutions. They might see organizations like NASA as part of some grand scheme to mislead the public. Oh, the old, they're hiding something from us narrative. But why go through all that trouble to fake around Earth? What would be the point? That's the million dollar question. Conspiracy theories often thrive on this idea of hidden knowledge, like there's some secret truth that only a select few are privy to. Mm. Believing in a flat earth can almost feel like being part of an exclusive club, like you've seen through the illusions that everyone else blindly accepts. I guess it could be appealing to feel like you're in the know, like you've cracked the code that everyone else is missing. But wouldn't it be simpler to just you know, look at all the evidence. You'd think so. But there's also the allure of simplicity. Yeah. The flat Earth model, with its flat disk and a dome, might seem more straightforward and understandable than the vastness of a spherical Earth hurtling through space. I can see that. Yeah. Sometimes the universe can feel pretty overwhelming. But even if you're looking for a simple explanation, shouldn't it at least, you know, make sense? Ideally, yes. Hmm. But... We humans have this thing called confirmation bias. No. We tend to gravitate towards information that confirms our existing beliefs, even if that information is shaky or misleading. Mm -hmm. And with the internet and social media, it's easier than ever to find echo chambers where these flawed ideas can get amplified and take on a life of their own. It's like those algorithms that feed you content based on what you've already clicked on, right? You end up in these online bubbles where everyone's agreeing with each other and it becomes hard to see any other perspective. Exactly. And often the content that grabs our attention is the most emotionally charged or controversial stuff. Oh, yeah. Which can further fuel the spread of misinformation. A simple search for flat earth could send you down a rabbit hole of videos and websites that just reinforce that belief, even if it's completely unfounded. It's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. The more you look for evidence to support your bias, the more likely you are to find it, even if it's not the whole picture. Right. And that's why critical thinking is so important. Mm. We need to be aware of our own biases double check our sources of information and be open to evidence that might challenge our preconceived notions. So in a way, the flat earth theory is like a case study in how misinformation spreads and how our own biases can shape our understanding of the world. I'd agree with that. It highlights the need for better science education, critical thinking skills, and media literacy, especially in this digital age where we're bombarded with information from all directions. It's like we need to be savvy information detectives sorting through the facts and the fiction and making sure we're not getting fooled by something that just sounds catchy or plays on our emotions. Well said. It's about being curious, but also being critical and not being afraid to ask questions. Okay, so we've talked about why some folks might be drawn to the flat earth theory and how misinformation can spread. But is there any actual harm in believing the Earth is flat? I mean, if it's not hurting anyone, does it really matter? That's a good question, and it's something to think about carefully. While it might seem like a harmless belief held by a small group, the spread of misinformation, particularly when it comes to science, can have wider implications. Okay, I'm intrigued. What kind of implications are we talking about? For one, it erodes trust in legitimate scientific institutions and experts. Mm. When people are constantly exposed to misinformation that contradicts well-established scientific principles, it creates doubt and skepticism, making it harder to address real-world problems that need science-backed solutions. 
I see your point. If people lose faith in science, it becomes more difficult to tackle important issues like climate change, public health crises, or even something as simple as promoting vaccines. Exactly. Scientific understanding is essential for making informed decisions, both personally and as a society. And when misinformation takes root, it can hinder our ability to make those decisions effectively. So it's not just about whether you believe the Earth is flat or not. It's about the impact that distrust in science can have on our ability to face the challenges of a complex world. Right, and we've seen how the spread of misinformation can have real-world consequences, especially in recent years with the rise of anti-vaccine sentiments and climate change denial. These movements often stem from a rejection of scientific consensus. It's a stark reminder that critical thinking and scientific literacy are not just academic exercises. They're crucial for a functioning society. Absolutely. We need to equip ourselves with the skills to evaluate information critically, to discern credible sources from those peddling misinformation, and to engage in constructive dialogue even when we disagree. Well said. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground in this part of our deep dive. We've explored some of the reasons behind flat earth beliefs, the role of social media and confirmation bias, and the potential consequences of spreading misinformation. It's been a fascinating and at times thought-provoking journey. It has been, and I think it emphasizes the importance of approaching these topics with curiosity and a desire to understand the complexities involved, rather than simply dismissing those who hold these beliefs as irrational or ignorant. I completely agree. So we encourage you to continue exploring this topic and to engage in thoughtful conversations about misinformation, critical thinking, and the vital role of scientific literacy. Perhaps by understanding why people believe in a flat earth, we can gain insights into how to bridge divides, promote critical thinking, and foster a more informed and engaged society. Beautifully put. Huh. Well, that wraps up part two of our flat earth deep dive, but hold on tight because there's more to come. In part three, we'll shift our gaze upward and explore some of the most awe-inspiring evidence for a spherical Earth. Get ready for some cosmic perspective. Welcome back for the grand finale of our Flat Earth Deep Dive. I feel like we've journeyed to the center of the Earth and back, exploring all sorts of fascinating ideas along the way. We've certainly covered a lot of ground, from debunking myths to dissecting the psychology of belief. It's been quite the adventure. And now, as promised, we're blasting off into the cosmos to uncover some of the most awe-inspiring evidence for a spherical Earth. Get ready for some serious cosmic perspective. I'm excited to share some of these mind-blowing examples with you. Let's start with something you can observe with your own eyes, the phases of the moon. Oh, you can? You know how the moon seems to change shape throughout the month? going from a sliver to a full circle and back again? Of course. It's one of those everyday wonders that's easy to take for granted. Mm. But I have to admit, I never really connected it to the shape of the Earth. Well, those changing shapes, those lunar phases, are only possible because the moon is a sphere orbiting a spherical Earth. Mm. As the moon travels around us, the angle at which the sun illuminates its surface changes, right. creating those familiar crescents, gibbous shapes, and of course, the full moon. So the moon's phases are like a cosmic dance, choreographed by the interplay of light and shadow on a spherical stage. That's a beautiful way to put it. And if you ever need a little extra convincing that the moon is indeed a sphere, grab a pair of binoculars or a telescope and take a closer look. Observe the Terminator. The what? That's the line that separates the illuminated part of the moon from the dark side. You'll see craters and mountains casting long, distinct shadows, proving that the moon is a three-dimensional object, not a flat disk. Ah, the shadows tell the tale once again. It seems like shadows play a key role in proving the Earth is round both here on Earth and out in space. They do. Speaking of shadows, remember how we talked about lunar eclipses in part one and how the Earth's shadow on the moon is always circular no matter the angle of the eclipse? Yeah, that was a pretty convincing point. But how does that tie into this cosmic perspective we're talking about now? It all connects. Those circular shadows we see during lunar eclipses are a direct result of the Earth's spherical shape. Okay. Imagine shining a flashlight on a basketball. No matter which direction you shine, the light from the shadow it casts will always be round. The same principle applies to the Earth and the moon during a lunar eclipse. It's like a giant cosmic shadow puppet show with a... Earth and the moon is the main actors. Exactly. And this phenomenon has been observed and recorded for centuries, long before we had the technology to travel to space and see our planet with our own eyes. Speaking of space travel, haven't there been countless missions and observations from space that confirm the Earth's spherical shape? 
Absolutely. From the early days of the space race to the International Space Station and the numerous satellites orbiting our planet, we have a wealth of evidence from space exploration that undeniably confirms the Earth is a sphere. Yeah. It's not even a matter of debate in the scientific community. I remember seeing those first photographs of Earth from space, that iconic blue marble photo, for example. So, yeah. It's hard to deny the sheer beauty and power of those images. They really give you a sense of awe and wonder. They do. Those images are a testament to human ingenuity and our relentless curiosity to explore the unknown, and they provide undeniable proof that our home planet Earth is indeed a sphere. So we have evidence from the moon's phases, lunar eclipses, space missions, and countless observations from space. It's like the universe itself is giving us a big thumbs up for Team Spherical Earth. But is there anything else out there beyond our immediate cosmic neighborhood that supports this idea? There is. Let's venture a bit further out and talk about stellar parallax. Have you heard of this phenomenon? Hmm. It rings a bell, but I can't quite recall the details. Refresh my memory. It's a pretty cool concept that provides further confirmation of Earth's spherical shape and its movement through space. Okay. Basically, as Earth orbits the sun, our viewpoint of distant stars changes slightly. Mm -hmm. Think of it like holding your finger out at arm's length and closing one eye than the other. Yeah. Your finger will appear to shift slightly against the background. Oh, yeah. I've done that before. It's like a little optical illusion. But how does that relate to stars and the Earth's shape? Well, astronomers can measure these tiny shifts in the apparent positions of stars called parallax over the course of a year. And guess what? These measurements match perfectly with the predictions based on a spherical Earth orbiting the sun. So even the stars themselves are giving us clues about the Earth's shape. It seems like the evidence just keeps piling up no matter where we look. It does. And it's all thanks to the power of scientific observation, critical thinking, and the interconnectedness of our universe. This has been an incredible deep dive. We started with a seemingly straightforward question. Is the Earth flat? And we ended up exploring ancient wisdom, debunking myths, delving into psychology, and even venturing out into the vastness of space. It's been a journey of discovery for sure, and I think it highlights the importance of staying curious, questioning assumptions, and embracing the wonders of the natural world. And maybe most importantly, it reminds us that knowledge is a powerful tool, especially when it's rooted in evidence and critical thinking. Well said. So we encourage you to keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep looking up at the stars with a sense of wonder and curiosity. The universe is full of mysteries waiting to be uncovered. Who knows what incredible discoveries lie ahead? On that note, we'll wrap up our deep dive into the Flat Earth Theory. We hope you've enjoyed the journey and come away with a renewed appreciation for the beauty and complexity of our spherical world. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, keep those minds curious and those imaginations soaring.